Hello and welcome to lecture 21st. In last few lectures, we were discussing about different design approaches for axial flow compressors and fans. So, we were discussing about design methods named as a free vortex design, force vortex design, constant reaction design, exponential design, constant alpha 2 and work loading or our fundamental method. Now this is what is a compilation of all design methods what we have discussed in past few lectures. That is what is in sense of the variation of work with the radius, world distribution, axial velocity variation with the radius, variation of degree of reaction whether this method is opting for or is it satisfying a radial equilibrium and we will be putting some remarks that is what is related to the final blades what we will be getting. So, if you look at very first method what we have discussed it is free vortex method and as we have discussed during 50s and 60s people they were using this method for the development of gas turbine engines application to aero engines. Okay. Now, in that what we are looking for is my work variation that is what will remain constant. I will be having my work world distribution as say r into c w equal to constant and if we look at this is what it says axial velocity also we are assuming to be constant and we have derived with it says my degree of reaction that is what is varying all the way from hub to tip and this is what is satisfying our radial equilibrium equation. And if you look at this method that is what is giving highly twisted blades and we have realized there may be chances for my degree of reaction to go 0 or maybe negative value when we are looking for free vortex design concept. Okay. In order to overcome what limitations we are having with the free vortex design, we have opt for different approaches one of them that is what is a force vortex design approach. We can say my work variation that is what is varying with the function of r square. Here world distribution we are assuming C w in divided by r equal to constant and if we look at our axial velocity we are calculating based on radial equilibrium and it says my degree of reaction that is what is varying from hub to tip and yes this is what is satisfying our radial equilibrium equation. So, if you recall from our radial equilibrium requirement we say we need to have constant work input all the way from hub to shroud. We need to have our axial velocity to be constant and C w into r equal to constant. If we are satisfying these three requirements then we can say our radial equilibrium it is satisfied. Then we have discussed if we are able to have two parameters that is what is known to us we can calculate our third parameter. So, that is what we have done in our force vortex design. Then we have started discussing about the constant reaction design. So, if we look at it says my work variation along the radius that is what is constant. My world distribution that is what we have arbitrarily chosen world velocity component it says my C w 1 and C w 2 that is what is varying in the form of A r plus or minus B by R. So, at the entry we are assuming my world distribution, at the exit we are assuming different world distribution. My axial velocity that is what we are calculating based on radial equilibrium equation and as we have decided with say constant reaction. So, it says my variation of degree of reaction that is what is constant. And the limitation with this method it is not satisfying radial equilibrium. Okay. But it says this is what is more logical design and it may be used for design of special kind of compressors. Okay. 
then we are having our exponential design method if we are looking at my work variation that's what is constant and my world velocity distribution we can say that's what is based on my selection of arbitrary world distribution we can calculate our axial velocity based on radial equilibrium equation and it says my degree of reaction that's what is varying along my span or with radius from hub to shroud and we can say this is what is satisfying my radial equilibrium equation this also people used to say as a more logical design so many fans many compressors in actual engines we are finding they are having of this kind of design configuration we have discussed about the variation of my exponent from ranging of say maybe 0.8 to 2 that's what is of special category and there we are using this kind of design concepts these days people they started talking about constant alpha 2 design in which at the exit of my rotor alpha 2 we are assuming to be constant okay so there are special requirement downstream of my rotor we are having stator and for more challenging designs people they are opting for constant alpha 2 approach it says my work done supposed to be constant we can say my world distribution you can say my cw2 that's what is constant we are assuming our world component at the exit of rotor to be constant and at the entry we can assume that to be say a minus b by r we are having this axial velocity we can say it's supposed to be constant we can say my degree of reaction also is around constant you can say about constant approximately constant here we are ignoring our radial equilibrium the beauty of this design is we will be having less twisted blades okay so recent compressors what we are looking for say for lp compressor for hp compressor even for high bypass ratio fans or for low bypass ratio fans people they are looking for the special kind of requirements and this designs that's what will be catering those then we were discussing about say work loading or the fundamental method that's what it says my work done or work that's what is varying along my radius we are having variation of my cw component because at all stations we are not assuming our cw at entry and cw at the exit basically that's what we are calculating based on our fundamental understanding of aerodynamic work and thermodynamic work we can say our axial velocity we are assuming to be constant we will be having degree of reaction that's what is varying all the way from hub to tip and in this case also our radial equilibrium we are ignoring now the case is what blades we are getting that's what is having less twisted blade so it is all the choice of designer to meet special requirements and based on that he or she will be doing the design a group of people they are doing their design and finally based on their expectation if the design is meeting with they will be going for finalizing that design approach so there is no unique method in sense you are having multiple choice here when you are doing your design okay so with this background let's try to solve a numerical that's what will be giving you idea how do we approach with say different design concepts so let's take a numerical it says a low speed compressor need to be designed to have overall pressure rise of 1000 pascal with design speed of 2200 rpm the hub and tip radius are 0.1 meter and 0.2 meter respectively the axial velocity is 30 meter per second the estimated stage isentropic efficiency and work done factor they are 95% and 0.98 respectively 
the ambient conditions are p01 equal to 101325 pascal and temperature as 288 kelvin calculate the variation of air angles and degree of reaction for free vortex and constant reaction well distribution so this is what is a numerical we can say what all data that's what is given we know what is my tip radius it is 0.2 meter hub radius is 0.1 meter you can say you can calculate your mid radius that's what is 0.15 meter we have our rotational speed as say 2200 rpm you can say this speed is a low speed compressor we will be having our efficiency to be 95 percent and you can see work done factor it is given 98 percent so you can say this is what may be the first stage we are having our entry pressure and entry temperature and we are expecting our total pressure rise of 1000 pascal and axial velocity also is known to us now what all we are looking for is we are looking for variation of my air angles and degree of reaction so you can understand if we are looking for air angles we must know what all are the velocities at the entry of my rotor what are the velocities at the exit of my rotor when i say velocities we can say what are my absolute velocities my relative velocities based on that we will be calculating our cw that is nothing but my world component because that's what is important in order to calculate your degree of reaction okay and this cw that's what you can calculate based on what all work done is given to you okay so in order to meet this requirement let's move from bottom to top approach say initially we will be implementing our work done equation for the calculation of parameters so here what we know we know what is my total pressure rise required we know what is our efficiency and based on that we can calculate what will be my temperature ratio once we will be calculating our temperature ratio we are able to calculate our thermodynamic work so let's move step by step so very first point it says my stage pressure rise you can say p02 by p01 you can say what pressure rise we are expecting is say 1000 pascal that's what will be giving me my pressure ratio of 1.00986 pressure ratio now based on this pressure ratio we can calculate what will be our temperature ratio so here this temperature ratio we are correlating in sense of my pressure ratio and efficiency so this two are known to me if i'll be putting that's what will be giving me my temperature ratio as a 1.00298 now once this temperature ratio is known to us we can calculate what will be my outlet temperature so we can say we are able to calculate what will be my delta t0 so here if you look at since this is what is low speed application we are expecting our pressure rise in the range of 1000 pascal that's why my pressure ratio is lower and that's the reason why my t02 is also coming to be lower okay now once we are calculating this t02 we are able to calculate what will be my delta t0 okay now let's try to calculate what all will be my peripheral speed at different stations so in order to calculate we can say my peripheral speed at the hub it is my you know angular speed into hub radius my angular speed into say mid radius my angular speed into tip radius so this radius at hub tip and mid section that's what is given to us so if you will be putting this it will be giving me my peripheral speed at different stations just understand we are interested in calculation of what is happening at different stations mainly at three stations 
mid section, hub section and tip section. Now here in this case if you look at we can say we can correlate our aerodynamic work and thermodynamic work and based on that if we are putting this equation it says my change in whirl component that is what is a function of Cp delta T0, my work done factor and my peripheral speed at the mid station. So, we will be doing our calculation what is happening at the mid section first. So, it says my delta Cw that is what is coming as a 25.33 meter per second. Now, what we are asked for? We are asked for implementing two different design approaches. First, it is free vortex design in which we can say my n equal to minus 1. Okay. So, let us try to approach with say first design methodology that is what is say free vortex method. So, here if you look at my delta Cw that is nothing but the change in my tangential velocity component, we can write down here it is Cw2 minus Cw1. Since we are considering our entry to be axial 1, that is the reason why my Cw1 that is coming 0. So, if you are putting these numbers, it says we are able to calculate the whirl component at the exit and at the mid station. Okay. Now, if you are considering this is what will be my velocity triangle. Do not forget to plot velocity triangle in order to understand and in order to calculate various angles and various velocity components. So, here if you look at this is what is representing my inlet velocity triangle, this is what is representing my outlet velocity triangle for the rotor. Okay. So, from my velocity triangle I can say my 10 beta 1 that is what we can say it is U m i C a. So, based on that this U m we have calculated C m that is what is given it is 30 meter per second. So, based on that we can calculate what will be my entry air angle beta 1. In line to that based on my exit velocity triangle we can calculate what will be my beta 2. So, here this 10 beta 2 we can write down that is nothing but u m minus c w 2 m divided by c a. This u m is known to us, c w 2 is known to us, my axial velocity that is what is known to us, we can calculate what is my beta 2 at the mid section. Okay. So, you can understand we have calculated what is our whirl component and what will be the change in these angles. Now, at the exit similarly we can calculate what is our absolute flow angle. So, if we are putting this say it says 10 alpha 2 that is what is given by C w 2 divided by my C a. C a is nothing but this is what is my axial velocity component. So, it says I will be having my alpha 2 that is 40.17 degree. Now, what all we learn for free vortex design we are considering my C w into r equal to constant. So, here in this case since my C w at the mid station is known to me and my radius is known to me. So, I will be writing say we can write down C C w 2 at tip into r tip that is what is equal to C w 2 at the mid station into r at the mid station. So, you can understand we are basically calculating the constant and what we have assumed throughout my span my C w into r that remains constant. So, that is what will be giving us the idea to calculate what is happening in sense of change of C w 2 at mid station at tip and at the hub. So, let us calculate what is happening at the tip. It says my C w 2 at the tip it is 19 meter per second. Okay. Now, once we are able to calculate our whirl component at the tip, we can calculate what all are the flow angles. So, what we know my alpha 1 that is what is 0 because we are considering axial entry. So, based on my velocity triangle, we can calculate my 10 beta 1 that is u by C a. 
do not forget this u is at t okay and my axial velocity we are assuming to be constant so u t what we have calculated earlier it is 46.08 and ca it is known to us that's what is 30 meter per second so based on that we can calculate our beta 1 at t it is 57 degree same way we can calculate what is happening with my beta 2 at the tip so if we are looking at it says my well from velocity triangle we can write down my 10 beta 2 at tip it is u tip minus cw2 tip divided by ca so that's what is giving my beta 2 tip as 42.07 degree okay now same way we can calculate what is happening with my absolute flow angle so that's what is nothing but 10 inverse cw2 by ca and that's what is giving alpha 2 as 32.35 degree okay now you know based on what understanding we have we can do our calculation at half station also what we know from we free vortex concept my cw into r equal to constant since this constant at mid station it's known to me i can do calculation what is happening at the hub so i can write down this equation as cw2 into hub into rh equal to cw2 at mid station and rm so if you are putting this numbers it says my cw2 at the hub is coming 38 meter per second in line to what we have discussed we can do our calculation for beta 1 at the hub here also remember this beta 1 we are calculating at the hub so you will be having change in your velocity triangle do not forget okay so make a habit to plot the velocity triangle that's what will be giving you indication say you are putting your hub u at hub okay and that's what is giving me beta 1 at the hub same way we can calculate based on our exit velocity triangle beta 2 at the hub okay and this is what is similar to what we have done calculation at the mid section in line to what we have done calculation at the tip section okay and this is what will be giving me what is happening in sense of my alpha 2 and what is happening in sense of my beta 2 at the hub station so if you look at my beta 2 just careful that's what is coming minus 26.56 just look at say on one side we are putting this beta 2 okay so do not get confused that angle is coming negative just you need to put that or you need to represent in such a way that it will be on the other side of my velocity triangle okay now if you look at my blade or say my aerofoil shape also will be changing accordingly okay now alpha 2 you can calculate that's what is coming 51.7 degree now here if you look at we have done all our calculation for cw1 and cw2 at different stations we have calculated our flow angles now let's move with the next step that's what is for the calculation of degree of reaction so my degree of reaction we can write down it is 1 minus cw2 plus cw1 divided by 2u now let's try to put that or rewrite we can say my peripheral speed at any station that's what is we are writing as a my peripheral speed at the mid station into this radius ratio this r is nothing but that's what is representing particular station and rm that's what is representing my mid station okay so if you are putting this in in the form of formula it says my degree of reaction we can represent by this form let's try to say reformulate that so this is what will be my degree of reaction now what we are looking for is a variation of degree of reaction at different stations so you can say we can write down this degree of reaction in a more simplified way it says degree of reaction it is given by 1 minus some constant by r square 
there is a reason behind calculating you can straight away do calculation by putting some calculation of say cw2 at hub cw2 at say hub you can put cw1 at tip cw2 at tip that way also you can do the calculation but let me simplify this so it says this constant we are writing as say cw2 into r into rm divided by 2 2 into um and this is what will be giving me my degree of reaction that's what is given by 1 minus 0 0.0082 by r square so this is nothing but some constant divided by r square now this r as we have discussed there are different locations we know what are our radiuses at tip we know what are our radius at hub and radius at the mid station so let me write down degree of reaction at mid station degree of reaction at hub and my degree of reaction at tip let me put all these radius values at mid station at hub and at the tip that's what is giving me the variation of my degree of reaction so if you look at carefully it says my degree of reaction at the hub is coming 0.18 at mid station it is coming 0.63 and at tip it is coming around 0.79 so you can say for free vortex design, we will be having the variation of degree of reaction from hub to shroud. Okay. After doing all this calculation, let's move with the second approach. That's what is a constant reaction approach. And for this constant reaction approach, we are assuming our degree of reaction to be constant and constant work addition. Okay. This is what all we know from our previous calculation for say peripheral speed at hub, peripheral speed at mid station and my peripheral speed at tip station. What we know our degree of reaction that is what is given by 1 minus delta Cw by 2u. Now if we are arranging this term it says my Cw2 plus Cw1 that is what is given by 2u into 1 minus r. Okay. What we know? We are having this delta Cw term or change of Cw and Cw2 and Cw1. That is what is also coming in my work equation. So, let me put my aerodynamic work and thermodynamic work to be same. If we are putting that, it says my Cw2 minus Cw1 that's what we are representing in the form of cp delta t0 by lambda into u i'm sure this is what all we have discussed in our class but this is just for your understanding what all we are working at this moment okay so our requirement it is to calculate what is my cw1 and what is my cw2 at entry and at the exit of my rotor so if we will be putting say we are looking for our calculation at the hub station so we can write down we are having two equations what we have seen one that's what is in sense of degree of reaction second that's what is in sense of my delta t0 so delta t0 that's what is known to me and this degree of reaction that's what we are looking for okay so it says if we are assuming say our degree of reaction to be 0.5 that's what is given to you say at mid station or say this is what is at the hub station it is given say it is 0.5 if we are considering that because it's a constant reaction design it says my degree of reaction to be 0.5 so you can understand at hub my degree of reaction is 0.5 so if i'll be putting this in this equation for degree of reaction and my work done equation where I know all these numbers if we will be putting this in the case it says my CW1 and CW2 at the hub station we can calculate and that is what is coming my CW1 at the hub is minus 7.4 meter per second and my CW2 at the hub is 30.44 meter per second. Now once this is what is known to you we can put our velocity triangle be careful we have done our calculation for cw1 and if you look at this cw1 that's what is coming to be negative 
now you are expert enough to make your velocity triangle okay so you can say i am having negative swirl that's what is coming at the entry so that's what it says my beta 1 at the hub we can calculate it is uh minus cw1h since this is what is in negative direction you can say that's what is getting added up here this is what is you need to take care of that's what is giving me my beta 1 at the hub as 45 degree same way we can do our calculation for alpha 1 that is coming minus 13.85 now what design approach we are discussing that's what is constant reaction design approach so what it says for 50 percent reaction we will be having our blades to be symmetrical blade so for symmetrical blade what it says my alpha 2 and beta 1 that's what is same and my beta 2 and alpha 1 that's what is coming to be same so you can say my alpha 2 and beta 1 that will be 45 degree and my beta 2 and alpha 1 that's what is minus 13.85 degree in line to that we can do our calculation at the mid station so we can rewrite the equation and we will be doing our calculation for two different approaches one that's what is constant reaction and my work done equation we will be getting our cw2 variation at the mid station we can calculate our cw1 calculation at the mid station once this world component that's what we are calculating with that's what will be giving us idea how to do calculation for variation of our flow angles so here if you look at this is what is by beta 1 so beta 1 that's what we are calculating just look at here at the mid station my cw1 that's what is coming positive so that's what is on other side you can see my alpha 1 that's what is coming to be positive it is coming 8.8 .8 degree same way as we are having our degree of reaction to be constant and that too it is 0.5 we can say we will be having symmetrical blading so it says my alpha 2 at the mid station and my beta 1 at the mid station that's what is same and it is 44.89 degree we have our alpha 1 m and beta 2 m that's what is coming to be same and that's what is 8.8 .8 degree so just look at how you will be changing your velocity triangle so this is what is my velocity triangle at the mid station okay always repeatedly i am saying make a habit of plotting the velocity triangle when you are doing your calculations okay now at the tip station also in line to what all we have discussed we can do our calculation for cw1 and cw2 at the tip station so this is what you can say my degree of reaction is 0.5 that's what is giving my CW2 at tip plus CW1 at the tip as some number. Same way, based on our work balance, we are getting CW2 at tip minus CW1 at tip as 18.92. Now, based on that, we are able to calculate our CW2 and CW1 at tip station. Now, as we have discussed, since my tip diameter that's what is larger so u value that's what will be coming to be larger we can do our calculation for beta 1 that's what we can have as a 42.47.29 degree we have our alpha 1 as a 24.35 degree and because of degree of reaction to be 50 percent we will be having symmetrical blading and for those symmetrical bladings my alpha 2 and beta 1 that's what is coming 47.29 degree and my beta 2 and alpha 1 they are coming say 24.35 degree okay now after doing all this calculation here this is what is very important that's what we need to observe so this is what is representing the variation of my angle from hub mid and tip station using free vortex concept and this is what is with constant reaction concept so here if you look at say my delta beta if you are looking at for free vortex concept we have discussed that's what will be coming to be large okay and if you are looking at say 
variation of my delta beta that is what is from hop to tip is coming larger that is what is giving highly twisted blade. Remember this is what is interpolation at particular three station hub mid and tip section. Now here for constant reaction if you are comparing these angles these angles are coming to be lower ok and this is what is representing how my degree of reaction that is what is varying. So, this line that is what is representing my free vortex concept and this line that is what is representing my 50 percent reaction concept. So, if you try to compare these two it says at mid section for free vortex my degree of reaction is coming to be large maybe around 0.65 ok and that is the reason why if you look at near the hub region our degree of reaction is coming to be larger maybe around 0.18 ok and if you compare both the design approaches it says for free vortex design approximately at 30 percent span your degree of reaction is coming 0.5. So, I am sure this is what will be giving you idea when we are taking two different approaches for our design. So, we have discussed about this design approach that is what is called free vortex design concept and we have taken the approach that is what is constant reaction design approach ok. So, it is advisable that you do your pen paper calculation literally sit down and do the calculation that is what will give you more confidence in sense of doing the calculation for variation of my world velocity components, variation of my degree of reaction, variation of flow angles. Thank you, thank you very much for your attention.